The wait is over, ladies and gentlemen. Winlater C mod version 13 with Bionic libraries has finally been released. Props to Coffin Colors, Peace Blaster, and the amazing Winlater community we have for providing feedback during the whole development process of this new version. For those wishing to use Winlater with controllers, can now finally do so without fear of their controller either not being detected, supported, or even losing connection when using Bluetooth. Enter the controller revolution, native gamepad support. I'm super excited. I'm super excited for you, and you should be too. In this video, I will break down how to set up your games and containers. I will go in detail on every bit of it. How to configure your presets for the most known game engines out there. We will not have another news video. We have waited too long for this. Other stuff can wait. If you are new to WinLater, let me explain what this is all about. WinLater is an Android emulator designed to run Windows x86-64 applications and games using Wine or Proton, and Box86, Box64 or FexCore. So play PC games on your Android devices. This particular version leverages Android's lightweight Bionic libraries. Instead of glibc, which the official WinLater uses now, Bionic has better integration with the Android's ecosystem, reducing CPU and memory strain in some cases. In a lot of cases, actually. In unga bunga terms, play computer games on Android, Bionic play games good. If this is your first time getting WinLater Steam mod, there is a link in the description below. Now, after having installed the app, we will be greeted with an empty screen with a few buttons. Obviously, mine is populated with two things called containers. On the top right corner, we got a new feature. When tapped, we can choose an application off of our shortcuts for quick access. After having done so, we will see the applications icon appear in the same place the star icon was. More about shortcuts later. The little monitor icon next to it opens up big picture mode, much like Steam's version. We can scroll through your games and run them from here. We can customize big picture mode in the settings over here, change the background music, the background and more. Next, let's take a look at how to create a container. Containers are isolated environments within the app that emulates a Windows-like system to run Windows applications or games on Android. Think of it as a virtual sandbox that is bundled with Box64 and WoW64 or FexCore to translate 84-bit and 32-bit games, and Wine or Proton for running Windows apps. Tap on the plus button on the top right corner and a screen opens up with a bunch of options. It might be overwhelming right now, but trust me, you'll get used to it over time with continued use. We can give it a name, set the resolution size to be virtualized. I would suggest leaving it at 720 unless the game you are running does not support it and needs a lower resolution. The Wine version is the thing that runs Windows applications. As of now, you can only choose Proton 9.0 x86-64 for the use of Box64. Proton 9.0 ARM 64 EC for the use of FexCore. Compatibility on both will be different, so you will have to experiment with both. Performance also depends on games. In most cases, both perform the same in my experience. In graphics driver, you can only choose wrapper as of this time. However, all the way on the right, you can select which graphics driver version you would like to use. We can either use our system driver or Qualcomm custom drivers and Mesa turn-up drivers. For more custom and turn-up drivers, link in the description below. More on how to install them later. In available extension, you can check which driver extensions the selected driver has available. This is useful to troubleshoot driver related things. Here we can select a max device memory, however last I checked this is a fixed setting and as far as I know we don't touch this any longer. Next, DX wrapper. If we tap on the question symbol we get an easy explanation of what these do. Wine D3D for DirectX 1 to 11 to OpenGL, DXVK for Direct3D from 9 to 11 to Vulkan. 
VKD3D Direct 3D to Vulkan, CNC D-Draw for most older classic games. Let's tap on the cogwheel all the way to the right here and a window opens up in which we can customize our selection. We can select a version. Do know that versions with GPL Async unlocks the Async and Async Cache. These are the better versions to use if possible. I've always been told to also enable them, so that's what I do. Also, ARM64 EC versions work the best on Proton ARM64 EC. There's also a frame rate cap option. Setting this will limit the FPS. And another Max device memory. Just don't touch this. A D-Draw Glide Wrapper can be selected for classic games. To know what your games use, visit the PC Gaming Wiki website. I dropped the link in the description below. In Audio Driver, we can choose between the new ALSA Reflector, ALSA, and Pulse Audio. Here's a breakdown to what the new ALSA Reflector does. ALSA Reflector, the unbreakable audio engine. So you're in game, you connect your Bluetooth headphones or a phone call comes in and the audio dies. Forcing a restart. Those days are over. <laughs> Introducing ALSA Reflector, a new optional audio driver that creates a virtual unbreakable audio sync. It provides stable back pressure to wine, completely immune to Android's device changes. Seamless recovery. Real audio is mirrored to your hardware. If the connection breaks, the playback stream is automatically rebuilt in the background without interrupting the game's audio flow. The music never stops. Well, it might. It's, it's a work in progress. <laughs> I have only used it once real quick and the result was that there was no audio. So there might be some bugs here and there still. Moving on, in 64-bit emulator for modern 64-bit games, we'll show which emulator it will use. For Proton X86-64, it will use Box64. For Proton ARM64 EC, it will use Fixcore. This can't be changed now and can't be changed after the creation of the container. 32-bit emulator for older games will be set here. When choosing Proton X86-64, this can't be changed. But with Proton ARM64 EC, you can choose between Fexcore or Box64. MIDI sound font. This option is for games and applications that use the MIDI sound format. Under Wine configuration, we never really touch anything. In Wine components, we rarely need to switch these components to the opposite. So I leave untouched unless I'm debugging a game that is not working. Most of the time the log will mention X-Audio or Visual C++ which then we can try changing this here. In environment variables I usually leave everything default unless there is a particular case with a game that needs a specific variable. Usually someone tells me so then I add them here. I do like using Pulse Audio for audio driver and some games sound crackly so to fix this I add the Pulse Latency msec variable with a value of 90. In the advanced tab we can choose the Box64 version and Box64 preset. This will only work with the x86-64 container. However, when using an ARM64 EC container, these settings will apply to the Box64 emulator for 32-bit games when selected. Startup selection handles which apps to start once booting up the container. Your selection here will depend on what you are trying to run. This affects Steam a lot, for example. Also, if you'd like to enjoy full compatibility with the new controller support for the Proton ARM64 EC container, I would leave it to normal. Controllers won't work on the other options for some games. Processor affinity controls which CPU stays enabled or disabled. Useful to reduce or increase CPU resources allocated to games. Sometimes an old game will run too fast and require CPUs to be disabled. And that's it for creating a container, let's check out the menu. Here you can open up the shortcuts screen where all your game shortcuts populate. Shortcuts can be made within a container. You perform a right click on an icon by selecting the icon first and then tapping with two fingers. Or when using keyboard and mouse, hold down control and then click. And then tap create shortcut. Controller manager is the new menu that handles the new controller system. We can currently assign up to four controllers, be it controllers by USB or Bluetooth. On each controller you can enable the vibration function. 
There is a Turbo Macros feature, a reset button and assign button. When we tap on it, a prompt up top will appear requesting to press any button on the controller you wish to assign for controller number 2. If there aren't any controllers assigned, you will receive a prompt the first time you attempt to use a controller within a game and you can assign from there. This menu will also appear in the sign menu during gameplay. To make use of this controller system, normally the essential services option should work. However, some games I have found that still need a normal services option. I would like to explain the contents menu again as I often get uh, questions on how to install components like the XVK, Turnip, etc. First, make sure you are in possession of the component you would like to install. This needs to be in WCP format. You can find most publicly released components on my WinLater GitHub repository I linked in the description of the video below. All you need to do in this menu is select the type of component you would like to install. WinLater usually comes with pre-installed components, so they'll show up here. Once you've done your selection, tap on Install Content, navigate to where you've downloaded the component and select it. Currently for this, there are no Box64, WoW Box64 and FXCore sources from which you can easily create an installable component, at least not to my knowledge. It requires a bit of tinkering to convert them to a supported component. Another thing I'd like to explain quickly is the Adrenatools GPU drivers menu. Here you can install custom Qualcomm drivers and Mesa Turnip drivers. It can be from anyone who is able to compile them they need to be in a zip format to install. All you gotta do is tap install drivers and navigate to the driver you downloaded. I got my own repository with a collection of custom drivers and turnip drivers. I put the link in the description down below. Finally, let's talk about Box64 and Xcore presets. I have updated my old preset shards I used previously in an Unity Games video. These presets are what I recommend using to run games. However, experience may vary between many factors like CPU, GPU, RAM, operative system, Android kernel version, the haircut you have, the clothes you wear, and the no girlfriends you have. <laughs> For Unity with Mono Bleeding Edge, I would use these. In the top right corner, I've placed what you should look for in the main folder of the game. If you see this, then the game uses Unity's Mono compiler. Mono games mainly don't like Big Block they will crash. The following chart is for Unity with the Game Assembly library, like seen in the top right corner. In this case, Game Assembly likes Big Block and will perform better because of it. However, that doesn't exclude them from crashes or freezes, so sometimes safe flags or strongmen is still needed. This next chart is for non-Unity games. I, it's just literally the previous chart, but the, for the sake of making things clear, Still note, all these presets are not be all and end all presets. You should still experiment and see what works. Rarely, games don't play nice with Big Block 3 and need Big Block 2 instead, or may need Strong Memory 2 or Safe Flags 2. I'm not going to explain into detail what each variable does, I actually don't know, I don't know the exact technicals behind them. And all that matters is knowing what works anyway. Well, this one thing may be helpful concerning safe flags. This variable may fix graphics issues and broken physics in certain games. In fact, it's suggested to always keep safe flags on. So, for the new variables present in the presets editor, I asked the big man of Box himself. And well, let me just show you a screenshot so you can pause and read yourself. It's rather lengthy with technical terms I don't understand, but I hope someone in the community will. The main takeaway with Align Atomics is that it is unlikely to change anything visible in terms of performance or memory footprint and may make things crash more. When a game crashes while Aligned Atomics is enabled, try disabling it. One person claims that this reduces CPU overhead, I personally never experienced this, but I'll give them the benefit of the doubt, so I'm putting this out here because maybe it does for others. For Dynarec DF, or Deferred, usually the default value will be the fastest, which is enabled. I'm not going to add more on this, since the rest is not relevant to us at the moment since the call red variable 
that should be combined with this is currently a toggle instead of a value. Maybe they will change this in the future. For Dynarec Dirty, a value of Dirty 1 can possibly increase performance by 2 times. It's apparently needed for Rockstar games to avoid timeouts. There is a mention of Need for Speed Heat when launched from Steam, increasing perf by 80%. Dirty 2 can also be used, but apparently it's less fast and not recommended. Lastly, this variable is not visible anywhere on WinLater, but it is implemented in Box64. And I think it is crucial to know this one, as this affects your use of the strong memory variable. That said, according to what TSET says, it is advisable to start off with strong mem 0 always, and adjust according to the issues encountered while testing. Okay, that's it for Box64, now let's take a look at the presets of FixCore. For this, we'll navigate to the Advanced tab of the Proton ARM64 EC container, and down where the FixCore section begins, we can see FixCore version, TSO mode, x87 mode, and multi-block. Pulling my chart for this, it's pretty straightforward. FexCore requires less tinkering. It is nice for those who do not want to spend too much time fine-tuning. Just set these presets and play. Like everything else, they're not be-all and end-all presets, however. For Unity, these will work respectively as stated, depending on which compiler the game uses. For non-Unity games, they may work as well. The principle is, if you get a crash, downgrade the TSO mode from fastest to fast. I think I covered the most important parts of CMOD. If I did forget something, please do write in the comment section below. For my next video, I will be revisiting most games I previously tested until my brain melts. We will see how much improvements there are since the last CMOD. So yeah, make sure to like, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell and share this video. Thank you for watching, see you next time.